Hello, I'm Ben Barr, CEO of We Are Unity, and welcome to Catalyst Conversations, a series of unique chats with the leaders of corporate Australia. And today I'm privileged to be joined by Rowan Lund, Group CEO, NRMA. Rowan, thanks for joining us today. Um, why don't we start by perhaps tell us a little bit about yourself and, and the NRMA? Perfect. And thank you, Ben. And uh, Rowan Lund, CEO of NRMA. NRMA it's an old business. It's been around for a hundred years. Uh, old Mutual, Australia's largest membership organisation. With the organisation, the first mandate, we had the former Prime Minister stepped in as CEO and President. And his, his vision for the business was, um, well, we need to keep people moving. We want to open up the country. It's roads that will do it. And the NRMA was formed. And, you know, a hundred years on, the group's expanded now to be in other areas. And we holiday parks and car rental and hotels and ferries and it's a, a mixed bag of an organization but everything still has that common purpose of keeping people moving clearly a lot of a lot of heritage there L looking forward into the future what's your vision for the for the business what's your aspiration i still think that original purpose holds true and you know after fires flood storms um, that we'd seen coming at christmas time and now covid I think that purpose of getting people out moving again takes on new meaning. Uh, we talk about confidence. You know, is there a safety and assurance, a confidence for you to get moving? And that's the role roadside has always played, the confidence to get in my car and go. Mm. But also tourism. I think we see that domestic tourism underpins so much of the communities and a lot of this country's economy. And to, to see that there'll be an investment needed over the next few years and a role to be played to get people out doing road trips and going beyond. And so I think the group, I can see the group continuing on the path it's been on, but probably exponentially, probably pushing out in those areas in particular. Today in the current state, how does purpose play a role for you? You know, when we look at purpose and values, um, you know, the things that bind, bind your people together. For NRMA, we know that's, it's about people. So it's about the people we help every day. It's the people we move and it's about our staff. And for our business, we, we see the two so intertwined. We're not setting out with a purpose of conquering everything. It's, it's a purpose of starting small and helping people. And, and who is it we're trying to help today? And I think that's a purpose that's shared by all of our staff. And that's what it builds from. In the context of the current climate, um, can you talk us about you know, a couple of the challenges that you and, and, and the team may have been facing? The first couple of weeks, um, a lot of effort from everyone to get on top of that. And one of the things that struck me most, you know, we've spent years plotting and planning flexible work environments and how we can move more people to work from home. And within a space of 48 hours, you had the whole organization able to do it. And it's amazing what a crisis does. You know, we, it creates action and people find ways to do it. Can you talk us through, you know, how, how are some of the behaviors that are coming through positively as a result of this environment uh, impacting business? Yeah, I think the, you know, as we move to using uh, video and communicating directly with staff, uh, that's certainly something I'd want to see continue. It allows messages to be given directly. Sometimes messages get filtered through large organisations and sometimes we don't get to hear from everyone, uh, whether it's on Yammer or any of our social channels. One thing I've noticed too is staff have no hesitation. There's a confidence in everyone wanting to let me know what we could do. And that's fantastic, though, because it's creating a two-way communication, you know, across thousands of staff. But we're finding we can move quite quickly with that. I don't ever see us returning to five days a week. I, I don't see us returning to people, certainly our staff, coming in in peak hours and going home at peak hours. I think we'll see a very different working model where we'll use office, offices for meetings. Uh, we probably, though, it'll be what works for you. And if you want to work in an office, great. If you want to work from home, great. If you want to work remotely out on the road, living on a farm out west, I, I, I don't see how any of that changes the ability of you to do your job. Would you say that through this, the NRMA has almost become more connected? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think from, uh, it's becoming a cliche now, but we're all in this together. The staff have a bit of fun at my expense in terms of my, the standard of my wardrobe that I only seem to wear flannels and the, um, but 
that is my wardrobe. <laughs> That's my weekend wardrobe. But, you know, I had an exec meeting. It was such a funny moment. One of the team, um, you know, she put up her shoes and talked about how she's wearing Ugg boots today. And everyone had a bit of a laugh. And then of seven of us, four people were wearing Ugg boots. And we had a, and we just had a laugh about that as to, you know, you take people away from the office and everyone's the same. You know, when you strip it away and in this environment with COVID, it, there's, a, there's an equality to how we all operate and how we deal with it. And I think that's been, that's been quite a watershed moment for the organisation to realise that. And hierarchy goes out the window and that's powerful. What advice would you give other leaders around the importance of storytelling? I like examples. I, I like people to see great demonstrations of, of what it is we're talking about. When I want to talk to our staff on the front line about being human, and I want you to think of the customers and think of their needs and think of them as people. And examples I use, you know, I use a Happy Meal story. And a call comes in from a lady who says, um, you know, she's quite distressed and says, can you come to me? You know, my car's broken down. And we say, are you safe? And she says, yes, but my child's hungry. Um, we take that, we send it out to dispatch. We have a patrol that turns up, he turns up 11 minutes later and hands the lady a happy meal for a child and brings tears to her eyes. Mm. And the reason I tell the story is because staff can hear the person in co contact center, what she heard was a hungry child. Mm. She didn't hear a job or I've got to get someone out there. She heard there's a hungry child. It's not something you coach or train. It's not something you could ever educate. It's a beautiful story when you hear it like that. And it's why I see on hot days, I have patrols now, you know, they're packing away cold water on ice or even ice blocks for kids um, that they can hand out when they go to a job. It's, um, that's real emotional connection, isn't it? That sort of context. It's, it almost sounds like the storytelling nature is creating a very authentic culture, which is then translating into the brand experience that your customers and members are getting. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any um, secret to the fact that every business that we're in has the highest NPS net promoter score against any of its peers. I can't take credit for that. My management team can't take credit. That comes because I've got people on the front line who actually care deeply about the people they help, follow your heart, do what's right and be human. And that is the easiest. It's not something you can teach, but it's certainly if you've got good people that work for you, it's it's the easiest way to get to where we want to be. Well, it's clearly in the DNA. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think, yeah, as a leader, you're clearly empowering people to bring that to the fore and make that a reality, which is, which is fantastic and, uh, and not all too common. Um, so, look, we're nearly out of time. Um, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and learn from you. But before I let you go, um, there's one final question that I'd like to ask. Um, which is, if you could travel back in time and visit yourself on day one of this job, um, what advice would you give yourself? I, when I first came into the role, I had lots of big ideas and like a bull in a china shop, I was breaking lots of things too when I first started. I, I don't spend a lot of time going back thinking, would I have done it differently? But if I had my time again, I, I would have spent some time understanding the soul of the organization and the people and I came in with a culture that I wanted and the values that I wanted and here's the plan and this is what we're going to do and we're going to stop doing this and we're going to start doing this I probably it probably then took me time after that moment to get everyone with me to go um, if I had have spent the time earlier and really understood the soul of the business and what the people believed in I think we would have got to the same place and it probably wouldn't have been as painful as it was in those first few months uh, with me slashing and burning and terrorizing people. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you, you needed a, it needed a poke. <laughs> and so it's hard to know, would we have got the same momentum in our organization businesses if that didn't happen? Yeah. Lesson, lessons learned, but, but that's, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing it. And thanks again for, for joining today, um, much appreciated. And uh, thanks to all of you for tuning in and watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got another great guest next week. Uh, I'm Ben Bars. goodbye for now.